All right. I will be your uh, game master, or as Vampire the Masquerade calls it, uh, storyteller, uh, Graham Phantom Watson. Uh, let's get into who each of you are. I'm Steve Jirachi. I uh, I have played in the in the new Kamak game, uh, the live action version of it, like some 15 years ago. I helped Graham kind of come up with some of the ideas originally, and did some of the uh, side characters, and he has changed a lot and so i'm i'm eager to kind of get back into the world the character i'm playing is very different than the person that i am so you guys don't know either one of them yet so it'll be uh it'll be really well you know i met you you guys but (laughs) either way the the viewers at home uh haven't met us but we're i I hope pretty different and this should be uh should be a lot of fun so i'm really really eager to get started uh andy introduce yourself as a player i'm andy uh Good friend of really everybody in this room. I've done a bunch of trivia, comedic, and production work with uh, our wonderful DM in the past, and uh, I generally like to play calculated characters. Think it's going to be a think it's going to be a goofy. Uh, Kimber, who are you? Like as a person, um, it's I... like a deep dive. <laughs> Well, yeah, my name's Kimber, and um, I've. This is the first um, Vampire the Masquerade campaign I've been on. I've played D and D before. My character is. Um, her name is Excavo, and that's actually a pseudonym, and nobody actually knows her name. She does not share that information, so that is my character's name. And um, we're going to get into character introductions uh, here okay. in just in a moment. Blake, who are you? Hi, I'm Blake. Um, I have virtually no role playing game experience. <laughs> um, I've played a couple D&D one offs, but I am super fresh to all this. But, like the rest of the world, I have a lot of free time to try new things <laughs> right now. And we have a friend who's whittling. We get it. <laughs> so, like, I have I read a bunch of lore for Vampire the Masquerade nice. to get ready for this. Yeah, I didn't do that. Um, but my, previously, my, my main experience with vampires is seeing Twilight in theaters eight times, so... <laughs> Eight times? I hope that's not true. Is this true? true is this two truths and a lie? For for the sake of humor and <laughs> jokes on a live stream, it's totally, absolutely true. Definitely did that. Got it. Um, and I, I like obviously I'm Team Edward. Else I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> is your character? No doubt. Please say it's Edward. <laughs> my, my my character's not Edward, but I guess we'll get to that in a second. Oh, damn, it's probably messy. Way to be cognizant of the production. Well it's done. Jasper. Pay attention, I'm Brett and Blake. I appreciate that. So Thank you. Yeah, the lighter, the lighter nice. notes here. Oh, my, my biggest, I should say, my biggest experience with role-playing games is just uh, listening to the Adventure Zone a ton, and that made me want to get into games. See, I haven't, I haven't really listened to a lot of gaming podcasts. Yeah, so um, I'm like more attuned to like the podcasting element than the actual gameplay at this point. Well, like streams on Twitch, stuff like that, that's what got me back into it too. Like, I do love me some more. <laughs> it's having, it's having kind of a moment, right now, <laughs> cultural, cultural time in the sun. Since you are our newest player, how about we start the game? with a scene introducing your character. Let's do it. All right. Uh, first, uh, introduce us to to your character. What is his name, and how would you describe uh, him, who he is, what he looks like, uh, just who he is in life? Okay. Um, my character's name is Archibald Alvins. Some people call him Archie. He doesn't like this, but they do. People who, uh, actually, no, I was going to say people call him Baldy instead, but I don't think he's bald like I am. Um, How long is his hair? It's luxurious. Let's say it's not long, but he needs a haircut. It's like in that awkward in-between stage where it's not, it's not short anymore, but it's not long either. 
and it exactly. should probably like be cut or he needs to commit and grow it out. Um, he is a very bookish individual. If you saw him and interacted with him, you would think he is somewhat kind of socially awkward, but he comes off as very intelligent, which suits his profession. He is a professor, well-rounded in generally, uh, but mostly focusing on leftist theory, topics such as anarchism, the Russian Revolution, uh, things like that. So he's a very bookish uh, professor type, somewhat socially inept. He has a penchant for tweed uh, in his wardrobe and, and that sort of thing. But uh, he has kind of a, a, a David Byrne-ish affect of being not totally socially inept, but also fairly awkward at the same time. And what clan is he from? He is Bruja. Br- Bruja is how uh, oh, is it Bruja? Most, most people, you can, you can give it a more uh, academic I mean, flair. If if, yeah. <laughs> Bruja. Do I remember right that there, there was an interesting, <laughs> interesting background of who, who was it who embraced him? He was, um, so he was a professor. He's still something of a professor. Uh, he teaches night school now on account of being a vampire. But it was actually a student of his, a young appearing woman named Joan Dido, who came to his uh, office hours uh, a bit late in the evening. Kind of, he felt awkward. It was like that... Uh, song by the police don't stand so close to me that kind of situation where he thought she was making some strange advances uh comes into his office hours he gets very uncomfortable uh by her affectation she uh closes the door behind her he gets kind of uh, up in arms leave me alone back away from me but it wasn't what he thought uh, in, instead, it was uh, turning him into a vampire because her being Bruja, uh, famously a, a clan aligned with anarchism, thought that he, as a, a professor of leftist theory, might make a good addition to the clan. But then, since she's punk and cool and he's really boring, he's kind of been abandoned by his sire. And she ran off to other cooler people. You know, what he's doing in this crazy vampire world. Uh, another thing I thought that was interesting about your character. Uh, your character has two dots of the fame background. So people familiar with like this part of academia might actually recognize your character in the same way that other academics like Noam Chomsky have kind of risen into pop culture relevance. Uh, people might actually recognize your character from i don't know is is uh, commentary on leftist political theory that have have come up on the internet or uh, where specifically would people have uh, seen or heard about your character so yeah he's published a few books and he's published in some journals uh, noam chomsky is an excellent parallel um, Archibald has been asked to go on Chapo, but he has not accepted the invitation at this point. Remind me, what is Chapo? <laughs> oh, Chapo Trap House. It's this like dirt One of the Marx Brothers podcast. <laughs> okay, uh, so Archibald Alvin's in our first scene with him is summoned to see a gentleman named Drummer. Drummer is his clan's primogen. The primogen is uh, the the head of a clan in that city. It's usually the eldest of a clan. The primogen is uh, generally the person in charge of the clan in that city and usually the representative of that clan to the prince. There's usually a primogen council that meets occasionally that discusses matters and is kind of uh, in charge of stuff uh, in the city as a separate thing from the prince and the way the prince is in charge of stuff. 
drummer calls you in to meet with you. So, uh, Archie. Uh, yes. You may or may not know that uh, tonight there's going to be a gathering in Elysium. Now, I know you're, you're like the smartest guy in the fucking city or whatever, but you're, uh, you're kind of new here, and maybe you don't know everything. So I'm going to explain to you exactly what that means. All of the other kindred in the city are all going to put on nice suits and dresses, and they're going to go to a fancy mansion and prance around and talk business, and they're going to gossip. They're going to be served by their ghouls and guarded by security, and everyone's on their best behavior because they know that if they start a fight or if anyone uses any vampire powers on Elysium grounds, they're dead. Even kindred that aren't in the Camarilla get to come to Elysium because almost everybody's guaranteed protection. So you might see all sorts of people there. It's the oh, one wow. neutral territory in the city where you don't have to worry that fangs and claws are going to come out at any second. Oh, well, thank goodness. That sounds, that sounds good. I wouldn't want to get uh, roughed up or anything. Um, am I am I going to the, the Elysium? Well, see, you know who's not welcome at our city's Elysium? Um, who? The entire Bruja clan. Yeah, oh, you've been you've been out of the loop. Yeah, us, the the entire clan. I'm the primogen, the clan's representative. I'm not even allowed at the city gathering. Just because of a, a fucking misunderstanding that happened years ago where no one, no one really even got hurt. And because of prejudice against our clan and stereotypes about us, <laughs> about us not being able to control ourselves. Now, well, that, that doesn't seem fair or equitable at, at, at all. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what happened? What, why are they so upset about it? The, it's... It was long ago. You weren't there. I was barely involved. And I can control myself just fine. Can you control yourself, Archie? Oh, well, I, I would think so, yes. You, I'm fine. You seem like someone who can control yourself. Yes. Anyway, yeah. So our whole clan got ourselves banned from Elysium. Hmm. All of us. But that brings me to the reason why I've called you here. Drummer holds up an opened envelope and a folded piece of paper. I have here an invitation from the prince for you to attend tonight's gathering. So I'm, I have to represent the, the whole clan. I don't know what you have to do. I've been racking my goddamn I brain for the last hour trying to figure out what business you might have at Elysium tonight. And, uh... I've been drawing a blank, so I'm hoping you can clear things up for me, Professor. What the fuck is this invitation about? Um, I, I take the invitation and read it. It says, uh, Archibald Alvins is cordially invited to meet with the prince at Elysium tonight. And that's all it says. Well, I, I don't know why they want to see me. I assume they, they know that I'm in... Our clan, do you, do you think I should go? What should I do? Uh, you can't refuse an invitation from the prince. I mean, you could do it, but I don't think that would really improve relations with our clan. So I have to party. <laughs> well, okay, if you, if you say so. Well, you know, you're not like the rest of us. The rest of your Bruja brothers and sisters, you don't really run with the pack. Well, and uh, well, what, do you, what do you mean? I think there's a bunch of ways that that's true. And I've always had this feeling that you don't have much of a problem with us getting kicked out of Elysium. I know you've heard us talking about how we can't let this insult happen. How we can't 
go on living like outcasts like this about how this prince needs to pay for what she's done for this insult against all of us about how we're going to get respect one way or another so i'm going to ask you again what are you and the prince going to talk about archie well um i i'm going to to make a very good display and i i'm going to show everyone there that the the bruja should be welcome that we're perfectly respectable drummer just keeps staring at you that wasn't the right answer was it um oh oh no what are you going to talk to the prince about have you have you already been talking to the prince about something no this is the first i've heard of it i didn't even know about all of this falling out before anyway have you been going behind our back to talk to the prince about something i would never go behind your back you guys are my people (sighs) archie you're a smart guy Uh, but, but remember this whatever you're doing you're doing it the dumb way if you're turning your back on your family to do it alone, okay? Look, I'm sorry if we give you a hard time for being a nerd, okay? We just, we can't relate to you. We're supposed to be each other's strength, and we don't know how to be that for you. And we're afraid that that's been pushing you away. I don't know what you're going to talk to the prince about, but I'm hoping you'll be smart and you'll try to talk some sense into her tonight. Just just don't turn your back on your family, okay? I certainly won't. We are all comrades in this glorious revolution. He and throws the invitation a, at you and he walks away. It takes a diversity of <laughs> tactics and I'm still talking to you. Yeah, he's uh, already... It takes a diversity of tactics and... Um, he's gone. It, he's and way down the hallway. my nerdy skills not and, uh, anyway. will come You hear a door through. close. <laughs> you hear a car door close and... <laughs> <laughs> Darby. <laughs> we cut to Darby. Uh, All right. Somewhere in another city, somewhere else in in america darby uh who who is darby uh in many ways and i think this will be fun to explore uh darby's backstory has some parallels um to archibald's uh as a bit of a fish out of water in uh his place in the world of darkness versus his place in the real world um darby is man so such a contradiction he is um a brilliant auto mechanic and driver. So the first thing you got to know about him is that he is um, extremely good at what like what he does and his his occupation is knowing about machines and cars in particular and uh, he is awesome at that. And uh, that was what he did for a career before he was embraced. He was embraced by a very powerful and high generation Ventru. Uh, leader, and um, has was has been shunned uh, and ostracized by this particular person, and uh, because Darby is a, a simple a simple man, uh, he is not a smart fellow, and um, can get really lost in his pursuits uh, until there's some type of threat on him or the people that he's with. At that point, a switch flips and Darby becomes a reckless maniac. Uh, he doesn't go like berserk. It's not like uh, like someone swinging an axe furiously trying to murder everything around him, but he throws himself into the thick of danger um, as stupidly and recklessly as possible. Um, you might think that he has a death wish. He he is working through that. I, I don't know if, if he would say that specifically. Being in the world of darkness is not a really good fit for him. He is a fundamentally good person. He has high humanity and um, is very concerned about some of the choices that he has to make on a regular basis. And he's also um, hooked on meth. Uh, his- <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the dude's, the dude's got issues. His, um, yeah, he, so kind of the compromise like, that, like, that uh, Storyteller and I have come to is that his he exclusively feeds on meth addicts and keeps a supply of meth-infected blood uh, on him at all times, and, and it will hit it before combat, and that's kind of what flips that proverbial switch that we were talking about <laughs> earlier. Uh, not He's exactly heavy. like a Popeye to spinach type of situation, although maybe he thinks that it's like that. Um, either way, uh, it's it's not a good thing, you know. Like it's it, it probably feels problematic and uncomfortable when this happens. We're happened. not trying to glamorize exactly, exactly crystal meth. He is he is somewhat shameless about his affinity for it, and will we'll talk your ear off about how great it is. But otherwise, um, we as players don't endorse it to the kids. To be fair, it only has that effect on vampires. So if you are a normal human person, no reason to take it. Um, So once he became a vampire, uh, his entire pursuit was to try to stay alive because he was kind of uh, ostracized by uh, by his clan. And he took some time traveling around to other clans, kind of going where he would be taken in and would piss people off and kind of get ostracized and have to go somewhere else and is a little bit of a free agent right now. I'm not sure if Graham and I have decided uh, the, the group to whom he is affiliated at this current moment, and maybe that's something we can, we can figure out right now. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of Darby's backstory, and he's got an accent, so that's something you haven't heard yet. But when we get, when we, when we get into it, we'll get into it. Don't be scared. Darby's sire takes him aside. Darby. Son of a... Yep, yep, hi. Okay, so we actually have all of the servers and guards and valets that we need for the gathering at Elysium tonight, so I think that for the first time, you'll be able to relax and socialize. But you're still a ventru. Oh. So, oh, no, 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 so, no, 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 no. So you'll oh, you're still you're st- Darby, you're still. Are you sure? Are you sure there's not something else I could maybe uh I could clean whatever? Darby, Darby oh, you should shit. take this opportunity to oh. relax and socialize. Okay. Get out there and start yeah, to no, just yeah, be you're right, you're right. be a civilian for once. But again, uh, sure, you are yeah. expected to wear a nice suit and tie because you're still a ventru. No, uh, well, no. So, wait a minute. See, I don't have anything like that, and so I don't think you can I'm wear. wear my, you can wear the my, same. My, the, my what we give you have, to wear when you are. Have. Man, you're gonna give me something. Yes. Can I pick, can I pick it out of a, like a big room, like the Matrix or something? You have like a like a hallway full of. We can full give of you options, like but it it needs to be something that looks nice, so everyone knows what clan is still in charge. You are then true, and you still represent us, and right. we want everyone yeah, to know true. that you, you are know, the we, best. We are. We can compose ourselves. <clears throat> we don't want you looking sloppy. You can look that way. In your own haven, you can be I, I, comfortable. I We're fine with that. You, you're not going to steal my sound, man. What, whatever dumb outfit you need me to wear, I, well, I'm. I just, I'm not going to enjoy it. But you, you're the we, boss, boss. We assume that in time me. you will feel comfortable in formal wear, and we will have it uh, tailored. We will I have it tailored. Hey, I, I'm going to wear your monkey suit tonight. Uh, it sounds like I can't get out of that. But Darby, a a bes- not get too far ahead of ourselves on uh, on well, I'm going to be a fancy suit wearing guy sometimes. That, that Darby, doesn't, that the, doesn't sound like me. the pleasure of a bespoke suit is one that you must <laughs> really indulge in. That I don't know what that word means, but it sounds painful. Like I don't want a, a bespokey suit. Like hurting me? Like has it been washed too many times? Like I don't know. Like no, thank you. All right. Like I'm, I didn't sign up for any of this. Don't we? Don't we? Like stop moving if we get poked? Like see, that, I don't. That I don't is. Think that, see, you told me I was listening. That's on me for using words above your. That's on me. I'm sorry. Uh, you you do have an assignment though tonight that helps ground you. I, I know this. Yeah, yes. You need sure. assignments. They they help focus help, you. Tell so me you, what to do. Give me a checklist. Have, 
even though you're not you're not working tonight, you're socializing. You'd still have an assignment. I have an assignment. So I'm kind of working still. So I am like I have a job to do. So mm. I like this. I like this a lot. Mm-hmm. You you have a goal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're socializing. I want you to take this opportunity to network and to meet some people outside of the Ventru clan and to please try not to embarrass yourself. This is your special mission and it has to do with boons. Do you know what boons are? Uh, I remember Boone's farm, but I know I can't drink it anymore because if I do, I spit it out. It like doesn't taste good like it used to. You can still drink your Boone's farm terrible alcohol. It's you so that's what you want to, to talk about. It was Boone's farm. You have to you have to mix your Boone's farm with with blood with with human blood or with your own blood if if you want to be like bloody Mary, crass. Man. Most it's, of the guy in the morning and Boone's Farm exclusive at night. That's my thing. No, 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 no. Boone's, uh, Boone's are favors. Um, let me oh. let me explain. Like I want. Yeah. No, okay. Let me explain. Okay. Boone's are like favors that we use as currency instead of money. If okay. you offer someone a boon, then at any point in the future, they will be able to call on you to fulfill that boon in any way that they wish. Now, will you scratch my back? I'll scratch your situation. Yes. Yeah, buddy. Now there there are four kinds of boons. Uh-huh. I'm going to tell this to you. I'm also going to write this down and and put a piece of paper in your pocket because I don't I don't trust you to remember it. it. This guy gets it. I'm going I'm going to tell you though. Yep. yep. Just just to to try to hopefully it sticks. <clears throat> there are four kinds of boons. Trivial, mm-hmm. minor, major, life. Ooh, you went real quick there. Trivial boons are small favors, like helping someone find blood when they're hungry. Minor boons are larger favors that require you to go out of your way, and they have small downsides and risks, like hiding a fugitive from law enforcement. Major. Where would you put like a handy? Is that like a? Is that like a major? Is that like like is that? You know what? We'll, we'll cover that later. I like. I feel like putting things in the right box. Like it's going to be a tricky balance if you haven't done it before. Major boons are big favors that take a lot of risk or effort, like framing an important person for a major crime. And life boons are the biggest favors of all, and can encompass literally anything, including being honor bound to die for the other person. Usually. Someone keeps official records like the city harpy or the city chancellor of when someone bestows a boon upon someone else and when a boon is paid off. And one of the most egregious crimes that one can commit in Camarilla society is to be called upon to fulfill a boon and to refuse. And such oath breakers tend to be punished quite severely. I would like for you to find an opportunity to speak to the prince and to ask a small favor of her so that you would then owe her a boon. Now, do you know why? Darby was holding something the whole time and like wasn't really listening. I was listening, but I'm not rude. Darby, very rude, very distracted, looks up and... Realizes that he wasn't paying enough attention, nods, <clears throat> pretending like he was listening. Yep, go on. This this is so that the prince will know you and will have a record of having a boon with you and will have a vested interest in keeping you around. Also, when the prince needs something done, she will seek you out, meaning she will have another encounter with you in the future. Every time she sees your face and you're behaving yourself and acting competently, this is good for your future. So ask a favor of the prince, anything at all, and make sure that you owe her a boon. This could be a trivial boon, a minor boon, a major boon, anything at all. Just find her and ask her for something and then owe her something. That's your mission. Do you understand? Darby? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I got it mostly. Find the prince, do a thing, get the prince to owe you a thing. Ask, I think I got it. No, no. Ask the prince for a for a favor. Okay. All any right. any favor, something that would help you or would help the clan. Ask the prince for a favor, like a handy. Uh, yeah. What I'm I'm not sure what that is, but yeah. Ask the prince for for a handy. <laughs> Got it. Noted and confirmed, boss man. I got this for the clan. All right. We cut now to Augustine. Andy, would you uh, introduce (laughs) Augustine? Augustine is a member of the House Tremere, and in life, he was an obsessive scientist in the field of botany and found more interest in the life of plants than he did in people. Uh, When he was gifted with unlife, it honestly afforded him more time to devote towards that and lucky for him he wound up being sired into the Tremere clan and only furthered his abilities to manipulate shape grow plants he has since developed a method of water irrigation and nutrient distribution that has kind of revolutionized plant growth and with those patents And his ability to ever sink deeper into the corporate shadows, he has not only been able to keep himself well-lined with finances and away from humanity, but predominantly anonymous and keeping his fame and uh, public figure quite low. You're taking a car through the pouring rain to a gathering at Elysium with your regent. The regent is a rank in the Tremere who's the head of the Chantry. Chantry is kind of the Tremere uh, frat house. It's the uh, <laughs> it's the building in a city where uh, generally all the Tremere live and study together. You're making small talk with your regent. Your regent says to you, I have to tell you, uh, Augustine. Is it Augustine or is it Augustine? I hate saying people's names wrong. Augustine. Augustine? Please. It's with the emphasis on the gust. If that's what helps. Yeah, he's just I'm going out hot air. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember. It's like Augustine, like a gust of wind. Augustine, uh, our our clan is working on some uh, just exciting stuff these days. I got. I'm so glad that we're doing this this uh, this, this interchange of uh, of, of research uh, with all the different uh, chantries because I'm just getting. Uh, it's it's like a subscription to a magazine of like just exciting like scientific uh, discoveries and stuff. Uh, the updates I'm getting are just so wild. There's this elder in uh, Taos, New Mexico. He's uh, so he's mastered movement of the mind, and he's got this new apprentice of his who's focusing on ritual magic. And together they're developing this uh, this basic basic ritual, this low level ritual. Uh, that it's going to let you send objects into geostationary orbit in space so that they could just be just, just called down on command. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's in a, it's in a theoretical stage at the moment, but the concept itself is innovative. Uh, and it's, uh, what else I got? I was reading something, uh, just right before I came over here. It's, oh, it's been confirmed that a, a ritualist in Vienna, uh, has prepared a room that makes blood, check this out, makes blood more nourishing if you drink from humans when you're inside of the room. It does something to change the, the properties of the blood. So I don't, uh, it's anyone's guess what the application of this, I guess if there's like, if, uh, if, you're ex- if you don't got a lot of humans, you just take one of them in there. Or something. I, 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 it's cool. You know, that's how science works. You know, you, you build, maybe that's not anything, but maybe you build something else on top of that. Oh, uh, some guys I used to train up, train with up in Massachusetts, they're researching the effects that various predictive climate change models will have on the future of the vampire population and how the Tremere can prepare to best survive it and come out as the dominant clan. That's that's pretty exciting. I don't I don't think anybody else is doing that. Um, there. Oh, check this out. I think you. We may have even met this guy. We had this guy come over. We hosted him at the at the Chantry like uh, like two summers ago. We had like a cookout or something. There's this whiz kid in California who uh, he mastered uh, the path of the focus mind. The whole you know concentrating you know thoughts and and everything. Uh, he's been presenting himself 
as a new age meditation guru. And he's been helping scientists and entrepreneurs make breakthroughs. So gradually he's, he's going to have a lot of the most influential people in Silicon Valley, all of them in his pocket. Uh, man, Augustine, every night I wake up feeling gratitude that the Tremere found me all those centuries ago and that I am where I am and I am what I am tonight. Other clans, they're, they're stronger and they're faster and they could take a punch and they could turn into dogs and talk to gophers and shit. But we're, we're the masters of the most versatile system of magic in this world. We can, we can do literally anything if we work together. So, I mean, that at least makes one of us that's grateful that the Tremere took you in. So, yeah. That, okay. So remind me, what, what is it, what is it that you do? I grow plants very well. I mean, yeah, so does dirt. But I mean, like, what do you do? The magic stuff that you do, though. I sired dirt. I grow plants better than dirt. I mean, so does bullshit. But I mean, like, specifically for the Tremere, though. Like... I specialize in the manipulation and growth and withering of plants, whether that be shaping them much like a, a other Tremere would shape flesh and making large trees and sculptures, or whether that's rapidly growing poisons. It depends on the application, but the rapid growth, decay, and <laughs> propagation of plant life is something I've devoted my relatively short afterlife to augustine i i actually knew what you did i just i had never heard you describe it in your own words and i always wanted to hear how you put it i've heard how other people describe it how have you heard it described <laughs> no, no, why would, oh, no. no please go on you know in sitcoms Sometimes I, I see jokes where a mortal child goes off to college and the parents are disappointed that they're studying some ridiculous uh, liberal arts subject that has no clear job prospects uh, like f philosophy or uh, something. The way that most of us regard your green path studies is like our child went off to college to get a doctorate in feminist unicycling theory that we paid for well i i would be remiss not to acknowledge that you have literally paid for quite a lot and you have our thanks for bankrolling the recent chantry renovations i i, I don't recall how many hundreds of millions of dollars you're worth but i do remember uh that your income does come from something ridiculous you 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 trademarked some sort of fidget spinners for plant pollination or something what what was it I pull out the sheath, holstering my splinter servant, and show it to him without breaking the seal. I'll remind you that despite my misery, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> Upon my command, this thing will serve one purpose and make it to a rather morbid end before <laughs> expiring. <laughs> You just, you're just threatening this guy? I'd, ra I'd remind you that you owe respect, and I'd rather not trifle <laughs> with your trivialities. Uh, oh, your, oh, your humor. Your humor goes, goes right. a long yeah. way in, in us, us appreciating keeping you around. Regardless, the, the money that you've shared with the clan for, for much... Need a building up keep is appreciated. And I'll have to say, played a part in you being promoted from first to uh, to second degree apprentice. Uh, I don't think that you could ever be promoted up the pyramid based on your aptitude as a sorcerer, but I dare say that you might have a promising future in bribery. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. But also, I'm not. Your money is valuable to us. <laughs> oh, um, Augustine, speaking of advancement, 
Uh, you may have heard the rumors that I'm being eyed for a promotion from my current position of regent of our chantry to the lord of all chantries in the Great Lakes area. Now, if that happens, I will be relocating. Your sire, Mazengulf, won't have me as his superior, and we won't be able to have these chats anymore. The distance between us will be too great in in more ways than one. I'm afraid you don't know the double-edged sword of advancement. You've you've barely advanced in the years that you've been with us. You've you've mastered a thaumaturgical path, but you're still only a second degree apprentice. Um, your sire has also, despite his talent, eluded promotion to a higher rank. He is quite capable, and he's served us well, but he remains a first-degree magister with barely the authority to teach students and to help manage the chantry under my direction. Do you understand why your sire, Mazengulf, hasn't advanced? I tend to respect his privacy. Well, it's because of you, Augustine. While you are young, and you can be forgiven for your choices, nonetheless, the way that you reflect on him makes it seem that he's content to throw away his own future in order to let you do the same with yours. When I was promoted to regent, it was because I had demonstrated that I could turn any apprentice assigned to me into an indispensable asset to us, and to the Camarilla. Your sire, Mazengulf, maybe he sees something in you, but he's he's failed to explain what that is, and we haven't been impressed with what you've demonstrated. So, it's at the bottom of the pyramid that the two of you shall remain. But, we need reliable loyal people to serve us in mundane capacities so that the truly extraordinary sorcerers can shine and so that our clan as a whole can shine. We cannot rise up without a strong base. Never forget that you've been brought into the greatest organization in this world and collectively we can do anything and if it makes you happy to play with plants well, you're helping the rest of us accomplish our goals. That's, that's fine. And for what it's worth, if this is truly how you want to spend your immortality, or if you think that this is all that you can offer us, then you have my blessing. Oh, we're here. The car I will rolls. Truly, I will truly miss these talks with you. <laughs> The car rolls to a stop and a servant opens the door for you to get out and hands you an umbrella. We now go to Excavo. Kimber, introduce Excavo. I am I am Excavo. That is the name that I have uh, chosen to go by. Um, so you may have heard of my work. Um, I don't know if you remember the large... Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase hack. Um, I I did that to help uh, pay off some loans for people. Um, a couple hospitals, other big banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that's that's what I do. I am considered a um, a hacker of sorts. Um, I do have a little bit of an accent. Um, I am originally from France. Um, and I came to Kamak just to get away, just to not oh, be too. found out. Totally <laughs> behind for the glory of Kamak. As <laughs> I am not, I'm not from here, that's why I say it. Like oh, that. correction. Uh, uh, you... Are we in Kamak yet? No. Yeah. New Kamak. no, no one is in Kamak. Okay. None of you have heard of Kamak. You, you are somewhere else. Anywhere you want to be, not for Are you allowed to know where we're at? Clearly, we're in Muncie, Indiana. Oh, sorry for uh, not making that clear. Everyone starts in just some pick a pick a city in the United States. 
Uh, Muncie, Indiana. Sure. I was going to say, what's the meth capital of the Midwest? And I, I think you just answered it. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> right? An unnamed city. Uh, no. I'd, An I'd say Indianapolis. Um, sure. Heard it was, you know, large enough to do what I want, but small enough where I wouldn't be found. So, yeah. Indianapolis, sure. Why not? Um, I get pretty uh, anxious in social situations, so... Um, I don't really like working with people. I get very impatient when other people are holding me back from uh, doing what I want and what I think is best. So that, uh, just, just saying that now. <laughs> Excava had previously arranged to drive her sire to a gathering that was taking place at Elysium. Uh, you pull up and park outside of her house and knock on the door. Uh, a servant of hers, a uh, servant of your sire's, uh, answers and lets you in, uh, saying that your sire went into her psychomantium earlier that night and closed the door and hasn't been seen since. A psychomantium is a small, dimly lit room with a single chair and a large mirror angled upward so that it only reflects the darkness above. Occultists traditionally use these rooms to communicate with spirits of the dead, but may also use them for any purpose that requires isolation and concentration, such as receiving visions of the future, scrying on distant locations, projecting their consciousness, or simple meditation. Your sire's psychomantium is located in the converted walk-in closet of her upstairs bedroom. Okay, I guess I... I mean, I go. I'm trying to get to the party. Let's go. Knock, knock, knock. You uh, enter the house. You walk upstairs. You go into your sire's bedroom. You find in the bedroom the uh, converted walk-in closet door closed. Inside is the psychomantium, and uh, the closet door is is closed. Is you, it locked? Uh, you try the knob. Uh, it's it is locked. Okay. You knock and there's I, there's no immediate response. Okay. I look around for a, a key in the bedroom. There doesn't appear to be any key immediately like on any visible Before, surface. I have a bobby pin in my hair. Uh, what do you do with it? I try and fuck with the lock to open it. As you start fucking with the lock, you, you hear movement inside... The closet inside the psychomantium, you hear someone shifting around on the floor and the sound of broken glass moving around. Hey, are you okay in there? I'm trying to get in. I'm fucking with the lock. <laughs> you hear moaning and the sound of a chair being bumped up against a wall and what sounds like someone thumping against the door on the inside. Do I know their name? What is your sire's name? He told me not to come up with one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Your sire's name is Jennifer. That's pretty easy. Okay. Jennifer the sire. <laughs> Jen, let me in. Hey, you, get back over here. Come help me. You, you hear the sound of a weak hand tracing its way up the door and then turning the knob and then opening the door for you. When the door opens, you see a broken mirror. You see blood everywhere. You see shards of the broken mirror all over the floor. You see blood traced out in patterns on the wall. And you see on uh, her right fist. Her right fist is is bloody, it's like blood. she's been punching. I check for a pulse. Uh, she, uh, does, she not does not have one. I shake her shoulders. like. She's like, why, why are you doing, why are you doing this? this? Uh, you are, what is going on in here? What's happening? We've got to go. Listen, Listen, I can't. I can't go with you. What? Why not? What is happening? Are you okay? I'm going to be okay. I had to... 
I had to do it. I had to. It was going to. Do what? I had to hit it because it was going to. It's Who? so hard to. They. The four. Who? She holds up. She holds up her fist. Look. Look. You see? And she. Yeah, it's bloody. What's wrong? I hit it. I hit. I hit. I hit. Why? I hit it. Let, sl- you, you slow down. Okay? No! Okay. okay. Mirror. Okay? Mirror. Look. Four. See? But why? Because I had to hit it when it was coming. Four. Four. Hit. hit. What is it? Look. Hit. And she, she finds the, the biggest piece of mirror and she puts it on the, on the ground and, and she, she presses her hand against it. And she says, see, you see, and she points, she points at the mirror and she says, see, look at the mirror. it's in there. It's what in is there. in there? And she points at her own fist. She says, see, it's here. See, it's there. See, see? I, had to, I had to stop it. It was coming through. You see the four, the four are in there. The four are here. I had to meet it. I had the to four. meet it in the middle and what? I had to do it right when I did or else it was going to come through. I had to. I had to do it. It. What? It. This. The. Do you not? Do you not see all the? I see a broken mirror in yes, your face. Yes, I don't know what yes, you want me to do. Yes. You. You have to. You have to. Do you know why I embraced you? No. <laughs> I. 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 I see. I, I see I see things. I've always seen these things, but I don't know what to do about the things that I see. Today I I knew that I needed to come into here, that it was that it was coming in here out of the mirror, and that's why I had to come in here and meet it. Uh, four meets four and then I did and I stopped it and then it broke you understand this much right four and she holds up her fist and she points to her four knuckles. knuckles yes four meets four which matches the four what from the mirror four meets four, four. and then it broke because they met okay it's when it gets clearer when it gets closer. Everything focuses like a lens. Okay? It gets clearer when it gets closer. It's a lens. You have to focus it. It's okay if you don't understand right now. Do you know why I embraced you? No, I don't know why I'm here. I've, I've never known what to do about these things that I see. It hurts so much to see so much and not know what to do about these Mm. things that i see it's torture every day to see all this stuff and not be told what to do about this stuff that i see the only thing that's ever made sense to me about what to do is to embrace you everything that's that's lined up in my life as any kind of in instruction any like great big arrow that the universe has pointed me to has said that the thing for me to do is to embrace you and to give you what you need to do does that make sense you are what i'm doing with all of this See, i came i came here to get away i came here to get away and now i am stuck because you embraced me. I embrace you with as, as little of this curse of mine as I could. When I took your life, I gave you as little of my blood as I could. Just a few drops. I, I don't... Maybe it was foolish. I thought, I thought maybe if I gave you like as little as possible, you wouldn't be as, you know, this. It would like... O- only... You wouldn't be as cursed with these visions but now i i think that you need 
more of this for what is going to come no, next no, 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 for no. you. No, no, I do, I do not need more of your blood to be in your shoes. <laughs> no. I, I think that it will be better for you if you have... Why? You don't even, you don't even know me? You don't know who I am? You don't know what I do? Nobody knows what I do. I go by a pseudonym. You don't know me. I don't, but I think the universe knows you and knows what's coming next for you. And I think you need more sight. And she picks up a piece of mirror and she and she opens up a big gash in her wrist. Oh my God. And she starts walking toward you. And she says, I, I need you to drink deeply no. from me this time. No. What, what you didn't take I'm from leaving. me. I'm leaving. I think, I think you need this. And I think this might no. be the last time that I see you. I think this is your last no. opportunity. To do what? To take this gift from me. This I, sounds like a curse. I, it's a gift. Excavo. Why is it a gift? Because I, 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 I think you need this. I think this will give you the foresight that you need to. That is so vague. I can't. No, 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 no. I I told you it's it's like a lens. Things will focus when you get closer to them. Things will be clearer. No, I'm leaving. I am leaving. Adieu. I'm leaving. Well, I don't think I can go with you to Elysium. I think I need to stay here. I don't think I can go with you where you're going next. I think you need to go now. I think you need help, but I cannot give that to you. I, I, I work with. I, I mean, I don't even want to say what I do, but I don't do this. Will you take this as, as one last favor for your sire? Take what? My blood. Oh. Uh, <sighs> uh. She holds out. Mm. She holds out her wrist. So, so you drink your sire's blood. I do. All right. You feel a a rush of uh, euphoria that happens uh, whenever you drink any blood. Uh, just the normal feeling. Whenever you drink uh, kindred blood, uh, vampire blood. Uh, it feels especially potent. You feel an extra rush of euphoria. It's especially uh, rapturous. Uh, that's what you feel. You don't feel anything especially different. Uh, nothing special from it being your sire's blood. Nothing special from it being <clears throat> Malkavian blood. Your sire pulls away from you and kind of weakly kind of shuffles her way back into her destroyed uh, psychomantium and takes her chair props it back up and slumps over into it. She says, all right, go to Elysium. Four must meet four. It must break. Good luck. We go now to Elysium. Does Elysium have theme music? Elysium does not have theme music that, oh, that I know of. Like a string, string quartet. Now, what's the vibe? What's the vibe in there? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a string quartet, but a string quartet, uh, ironically playing, uh, like instrumental, the instrumental version of some popular, recognizable, like '90s hip hop song. Who's that? So like, it's like Richard Keys of String Quartets. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, one of those. <clears throat> so oh. the the following scene hey. happens to each of you separately in each of your respective cities, but more or less identically. Oh, we're not in the same city. Yeah, what? so then and what is Elysium? The Elysium? What's going on? Uh, Elysium is... Um, it's the term for a building or uh, a location that the Camarilla has declared uh, sacred <clears throat> grounds where violence and any kind of uh, uh, offensive powers are not allowed. And uh, that is where it's, it's considered neutral territory where everybody is uh, allowed to, to gather, to conduct their business, and consider themselves uh, safe. Every city has different 
every prince can set different levels of how seriously they take Elysium. Uh, in some versions of Vampire the Masquerade, they say that it's common that uh, once Elysium is declared, it's forever and for all time. And if anyone violates Elysium, that building is burned to the ground and uh, the earth is salted and it can never be used as Elysium ever again. Like it's that serious. Uh, sometimes there's like temporary Elysiums set up, but uh, Elysium is is typically... That's the that's the state of the building. It's like another term for like hallowed ground where all the vampires agree like, okay, we're not going to kill each other here. Um, there's even a, a special uh, political position of keeper of Elysium. It's a person appointed yeah. to keep everybody safe and to be on guard and to appoint deputies to like go around and make sure nobody has weapons and everyone's behaving themselves. Oh my God, this is like the hotel in John Wick. The Hotel in John Wick is the it's best. Very much like that. Oh actually. my god. It is a great analogy for Elysium. Uh, it's a perfect analogy. So we are all in different cities. Yeah, we're all in different, different Elysia right now. It felt like you were kind of bringing us to the same gathering, but that's not yeah. happening. We're all going to our own separate gatherings. We're kind of on our different own track. You're all in is different... it by race? Classic phantom misdirection. That's right. We're all on our own solo quest right now. You're all in different uh, Elysiums. Okay. It's actually Aww. Greek. It's Elysiums. Elysia? It is. Okay, I assumed Elysia. The following Greek scene Island. happens to each of you separately, but more or less identically in your respective cities. You are attending a monthly gathering of kindred in the opulent building that has been declared Elysium in your home city. You and fellow kindred are wandering the halls and discussing business and local politics when you're approached by four large gentlemen who say that they have a matter that they urgently need to discuss with you before ordering you to step outside with them. You recognize them all as being members of local kindred law enforcement. You recognize this as being highly unusual, but since you are in no position to resist, you do as they say. The moment you step off of Elysium grounds, you notice a car parked directly outside with its empty trunk open. While you're can I make a roll to have stashed my drugs before they take me, or like I feel like my number one priority as I'm being apprehended is to stash my drugs. They're not uh, taking away my phones or anything, right? Uh, they are only doing what I described to have done, and. You just made and failed your role to have stashed your drugs. While oh. you're momentarily distracted, one of the other vampires drives a wooden stake through your shirt and into your heart, inflicting three levels of lethal damage and paralyzing you. This is the first time anyone has ever put a stake into your heart, and even though you know that it's relatively harmless, the sudden paralysis fills you with a complete terror that you haven't felt since you died. Another kindred pulls out a walkie-talkie and quietly says into it, Suspect in custody. You're quickly thrown into the trunk of the car, and the lid is closed. Over the next 24 hours, you're transported into the basement of a closed restaurant where a trial has been hastily assembled. You see six other vampires in this room, most of whom you recognize as being important members of local Camarilla politics, including a judge sitting at a desk, three other kindred sitting alongside the judge, two guards watching the entrance, and a bailiff who pushes a wheeled office chair in which your still staked body is slumped over into the center of the room. Other than your wallet and clothes, everything that you had on you has been confiscated, including your drugs. The judge... No! You're staked. You can't yell. The judge is a nearly skeletal woman wearing a black robe with hair so white it's almost translucent. She speaks, reading from notes in front of her. The prisoner stands accused based on the testimony of one witness of plotting the assassination of this city's prince in hopes of taking her place. Sworn testimony describes how this traitor was overheard discussing their intentions and was later observed skulking into Elysium when it was empty in order to hide the weapon they intended to use to strike down our beloved prince. 
The witness who gave this testimony is a trusted and respected elder of the community in good standing with the Camarilla. So the prisoner's plea need not be heard, and there will be no defense. The prisoner what the fuck? is found guilty, and the sentence... I say that out loud as I'm found guilty. <laughs> do we recognize the person who's accusing us? You, or do they just say it? Or the person who there. had the testimony? Like, I feel like we don't know anybody. We are staked completely. Kimber, you do not say anything because you were staked. Uh, you, what was the question? Who do you recognize your question? So she said, like, the the person who accused us is in good standing. Is that person not in the room? Person is not present. Okay. <laughs> but we uh, wouldn't know anybody because we're staked. Uh, she continues, the prisoner is found guilty and the sentence is death. Furthermore, due to the traitor being a neonate and still the responsibility of their sire, their sire shall be punished by having to perform the execution and their sire shall immediately be stripped of all status domains and boons owed to them bailiff please remove the prisoner and take them to a cell to await execution have the sheriff apprehend the sire and have them staked and placed in a cell as well as the bailiff begins wheeling you out of the room a vampire whom you don't recognize who's seated near the judge touches the judge lightly on the shoulder and whispers something into her ear. The judge raises a hand toward the bailiff and he freezes in place. Does anyone happen to have heightened senses? Not me. Would that be a merit? First level of auspects. I have auspects one. Oh shit. Give me a perception plus investigation roll. This is one of the few um, things that you can do while staked. I think I did that right. Did I do it right? Yeah. I see a success. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You overhear the stranger saying to the judge, Madam, a- as I've said before, I'm here on behalf of Archon Glass. He's been following this case closely, and while he agrees with your judgment, uh, he has a different punishment in mind for this individual. We have a car ready in the parking lot for this prisoner transport now. Um, you see the judge taken aback. Glass wants to save this traitor from execution? The stranger replies... Not exactly. Um, You're welcome to speak to Mr. Glass personally if you wish to discuss the change to this prisoner's sentence. The stranger pulls out his cell phone and starts pulling up his contacts, but the judge interrupts. No, no, no. (laughs) There will be no need to contact the Archon. Um, You may have the prisoner. Please, please tell your master that he has my full respect and cooperation. The stranger puts the phone away and says, well, thank you. The judge motions for the bailiff to come closer to her. Please take the prisoner with this gentleman and load them into a car waiting outside. You're now hoisted over the bailiff's shoulder and loaded into the back of an SUV. (coughs) A nearby vampire who looks like a security guard starts the vehicle and drives you for hours through the night. As sunrise approaches, he pulls the SUV into a garage attached to a house in a suburban neighborhood and exits the vehicle, leaving you to sleep alone in the back, still staked. At nightfall, you wake with the sound of the SUV's ignition and are driven by the guard for several more hours. After countless miles of farmland, a dark forest rises up and envelops the road. The asphalt's winding path carves through the pitch black woods and eventually reveals a mid-sized city. Past a desolate industrial area in the outskirts, past a sleepy retail area, the SUV slows down as it enters a neighborhood buzzing with the sounds of an active nightlife. After a couple blocks of bars overflowing with stumbling locals, your guard pulls the vehicle into a parking lot behind a two-story nightclub thumping with music and flashing lights through its windows. He parks. With the engine off, he climbs into the back seat and puts the barrel of a large handgun against your eye socket. He says, This is your last chance. Don't fuck it up. 
then abruptly yanks out the stake, restoring your ability to move. He pauses momentarily to see if you're going to fight him. Then after you give no resistance, he grabs you roughly by the collar and escorts you out of the SUV and up to the entrance of an establishment with the name Club Wonderland, spelled in bright red neon letters. With his gun tucked into the back of his pants, the two of you approach the entrance of the club. A dozen well-dressed bar hoppers are waiting in line to have their IDs checked by a doorman and scanned with a handheld metal detector. A pair of tattooed roller derby women in fishnets, helmets, and knee and elbow pads are skating through the line and passing out handbills for an upcoming derby match. At the front of the line, your guard leans in and says something to the doorman that you can't hear. The doorman nods and motions the two of you in. Once inside, you see a large nightclub with a stage at the far end with a DJ operating complicated looking equipment on it. A few dozen people are mingling on a dance floor and a dozen more are idly chatting near a bar along the wall to the right. Curiously, you notice a large illuminated vertical transparent tube at each corner of the dance floor wide enough for a person to fit inside of, like the kind Augustus Gloop got stuck in in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. These tubes reach up to the U-shaped second floor of the nightclub and seem to extend down underneath the dance floor where there's presumably a basement. You also notice Alice in Wonderland themed decorations everywhere, such as Cheshire Cat housings for security cameras and a large sculpture of the hookah smoking caterpillar that it intermittently produces real puffs of water vapor under multicolored light. But also you see some out of place decorations like several life-size metal sculptures of hippos in various poses and a metal sculpture of a shirtless Steve Buscemi that someone has wrapped a towel around the waist of. Your brief survey of the club is interrupted by a chubby middle-aged man stumbling toward you looking a little out of place, wearing sandals and a suit jacket over a t-shirt and dirty slacks. He raises a plastic-lidded sippy cup to you in greeting and says, Hey! What's up? I'm Randy! What are you drinking? You're not drinking yet! I'm drinking! I forget what I was drinking. What are you, what are you gonna be drinking? Completely ignoring the drunk, your guard asks a staff member where the conference room is, and the staff member slowly leads you to the back of the nightclub through a sea of dancers, some of whom shoot you curious glances. You go down a hallway alongside the stage in the back, and then down a set of stairs to the basement. Downstairs, you and your guard enter a very curious, oval-shaped conference room. The wall opposite the door has an elaborate display of Dozens of melee weapons from various cultures laid out across it, as if lovingly arranged by a museum curator with a fascination with warfare. The other walls have strange paintings on them, and the middle of the table has a bust of a strange creature on it. Your guard motions for you to sit down, and after a few minutes, all four of you are sitting in a row on one side of the table, with your guards standing closely behind you. You appear to be waiting for someone to join you. Do you wish to do or say anything while you are waiting? <laughs> Would I ask for drugs? Uh, uh, yeah, probably. Hey, uh, any, anybody holding? Y'all Y'all got, I'm just asking, you know, just thought, no, saying a no, saying a hard no, just thought I'd just, hey, just thought I'd say, What's up? See what the situation, what situation, your situation was in. Anyway, uh, my bad, my bad, bad read, I guess. Uh, Are we handcuffed or anything? Nope, you're We're just, just you're just sitting in chairs. <clears throat> Wi-Fi is shit. So, um, where, where are we? Anybody? This, this um, is a good question, guys. It, here, we're here on this map. Is this how it always is? Well. It might be Elysium, but it's not the Elysium I was at before. So who are you, people? I'm Darby. If anybody is William Holden, Holden Caulfield, that'd be nice to meet you quite a bit, actually. Oh, you you enjoy you enjoy the catcher in the rye, one of my favorites as a boy. Honestly. Well, oh, Archibald, thanks. nice to meet you. Glad yeah, to meet you. Meet a, a fellow distinguished person of literary taste. 
Yeah, you you got it, man. Got it in one. Nice to meet you, buddy. I I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I, I I like it. You seem like a good dude. So, uh, where where are you hailing from, man? I was, oh, me. I was I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Oh, oh, you're you're from Chicago too. Did we all just come from Chicago? At well, least two of us. Fine, I'll be I'll be moment. Madison, Wisconsin, in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Well, Madison, Wisconsin, great town, good place to be. That's what I hear. A lovely view from the state house. So we're hey, just, you uh, we're just our thumbs here. Did so? Did you guys get mugged? I got, I got mugged. I got accused of killing someone. I didn't know who they were talking about. And then wouldn't exactly call this guy a friend. Yeah, no, this guy. Well, that's a winky ding. I mean. I the, the exact same thing happened to me. Ask, so did they take you, all your drugs? Because they for sure, seriously, all of them, and and they did not give them back at the end of the process. And well, very in a sense, they they, they took all of them, but also I had none, so they oh. took all of the none drugs that I had. The door opens, and a man in a long white coat and a wide-brimmed hat with a round top yeah, no. enters the room carrying a briefcase. He walks slowly around the table and sits across from you. The downturned brim of his hat obscures your view of some of his features, but you see a wide mustache that angles downward to frame his chin and straight white hair hanging loosely to his shoulders. Darby acts immediately. I just need everyone to know. Terrified of this guy, like horribly afraid of this guy, and in awe of him. Like, oh shit! Thinks he has seen someone really famous and terrifying, and he is, I don't know, cowering. I guess I don't know what vampires do, but he's not being casual about it, and he is very like afraid. <laughs> so I still think that this is just regular Elysium. So I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, I didn't realize that every one of these things was like a, a Lord of the Rings kind of convention, uh, Gandalf the White. <laughs> oh, okay, what are we doing here? If there's what a is chance for a literary what reference, is like that in the heart? What is happening? What's with the quiet guy over to the, the right of us? He looks like he'd be into plants or something. I'm just sitting in brooding frustration at my lack of control of this situation and quietly observing everybody. The the gentleman in white gives a little nod to the guard directly behind Archibald, and the guard uh, leans over and really slowly inserts the wooden stake back into the wound that Archibald had not yet healed, just the hole that was still in his chest going directly back into his heart. And Archibald is, uh, is paralyzed once again. <laughs> what? What? Wow! Shit! I didn't know! Good evening. I am Willem Glass. I serve as Archon under the authority of the Justicar Lucinde, who herself was appointed by the inner circle of the Camarilla to use whatever means necessary to enforce the laws of our kind. I act on the Justicar's behalf to handle problems such as yourselves. I am told that each of you has been sentenced to death for crimes against the Camarilla. While I would normally advocate that the sentence be carried out immediately, our organization's resources are strained in these nights in its struggles against its enemies, and the reflexive execution of criminals robs us of valuable strength and skill. Those crimes were trumped up bullshit, though. Probably for all of us. Definitely for me. I don't know. Either. Pretty sure you're still staked. No, I didn't get staked. No, I'm staked because I cracked a joke. He, he, nods, uh, he nods at the guard behind Darby, and the guard slowly slides the stake okay. back into the hole in Darby's <laughs> chest. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> there, there. I should have known that was going to happen. The Camarilla has had its attention and resources divided by its duties to protect us from existential threats to our kind. Many of our most skilled officers have been diverted overseas to handle an issue that we're dealing with in the Middle East. Our many enemies have further thinned our numbers in recent years. 
this leaves us with many crucial cities that were formerly Camarilla strongholds falling into our enemy's hands due to poor leadership. I am told that each of you plotted to assassinate your prince in order to take their place. Your death sentence has been commuted for one year during which you will perform a community service and show us what kinds of leaders you will make. If you do well, I will reevaluate your sentence and I may grant you your freedom. If you do poorly, I will personally carry out your original sentence. Tonight, you have been brought to a city called New Kamak, and you are to remain here for one year, during which time one of you shall serve as its prince, and the other three shall serve as the prince's advisory council. The outgoing sovereign is the renowned Prince Delacroix of Clan Toreador, who fortunately for you has a legendary reputation for successful city leadership. Matters above your pay grade demand his urgent relocation to the Middle East to assist us with an issue that we are dealing with in that region. But in his absence, I anticipate you should be able to coast on his many accomplishments here. This is a model Camarilla domain that has been ruled flawlessly. To be clear, what I will be informing my superior of is that for the next year, you are being left to safeguard the spotless city that Prince Delacroix has painstakingly built up to be a beacon of safety and strength for the Camarilla, while I find trusted, experienced leaders to relocate here to take over permanent leadership. And at the end of this year, your service will be judged, and I will execute you if I return to find this domain in less than satisfactory condition. If, however, you present me with an orderly city, where the Camarilla knows all, controls all, and fears none. You will be pardoned, and you will go free. Do you have any questions? He nods to the guards behind Darby and Archibald, and your stakes come out. Who would be the, the prince, and who would be the other three? I leave that up to Prince Delacroix to choose his successor. If I'm to be a warden of uh, New Kamak, my knowledge and power is fairly specialized. Have facilities been set up to accommodate my particular f- abilities? Or should I, should I reach out to my servants back home and have accommodations mm-hmm. made here? The only thing that has been set up to accommodate you in particular over these past few nights has been a prison cell and the place where you were going to be executed. So, do I get a phone call? And can I use that phone call to call my peeps to get some plant stuff brought out here? Because, I'll tell you what, it's going to be real rough if I I have to not have that. I'm going to be basically just a lackey. For the next year, there is, in fact, a communication lockdown in effect. You are not to contact anyone outside of the city personally or by proxy. You are not to allow any other kindred in the city to contact kindred outside of the city for assistance. And I assume if we do, it's going to be, uh, well, the the stake again or, or, or worse, right? It will be a violation of your community service. Have my mm-hmm. assets been frozen? Your money. Can I still? Oh. Yes. May I, may I still buy things? Oh, you have access to all of that, of course. Are our clans here? Do we have freeze like, my assets any functional inside? group of uh, dudes? Where's my sire at? They said he was in trouble as well. Uh, this was 
first chance, and it did not go well. I gotta tell you, this is a rough start. I, th- I think that all of your all of your sires are fine. The punishment that was going to be extended to them has also been commuted. At assuming that you perform well here. Okay. All right. <laughs> How do we not talk to anybody outside of the city? I mean, and still run a perfectly good city. I mean, what about trade? You know. Don't do that. No trade. <laughs> That's you, uh, what? Then, and then the assignment is pointless. You've been it, this to might fail. be mistake talking, but it sounds perfectly reasonable to me. <laughs> I have put out an advisory to all kindred traveling through this region to stay out of Nukamak if they do not have prior business here. Your community service will be spent in isolation so that we know that your accomplishments here are solely your own. Most importantly, you are, of course, not to set foot outside of city limits. Archon Willem Glass opens his briefcase. I was going to go to Daytona. And he slides. Sorry, because everything in the here, well, my, equi- my equipment, my, th- my things. What, what do I do? It sounds like they aren't going to let us have our stuff. Hey, who needs stuff when we, when we have each other, right, comrades? I don't know you. Okay. Yeah. This gentleman well, seems I, to have uh, the best I, attitude. He opens his briefcase well, and he slides. Uh, again, the, I don't know if I get along with Today I have I learned that the stake is a great motivational tool. He slides. I did not like the stake part. He slides yeah. four contracts across the table, written in blood, on parchment, and wreathed in mystic symbols in the margins. Augustine, uh, you need no test. You immediately recognize these as Tremere blood contracts. He slides these across the table, so there's one in front of each of you. Uh, Glass slides a sharp fountain pen over to Augustine first. I pushed him out of the way and signed it immediately. Like, just, (laughs) I'm in 100%. It's a sharp fountain pen. It doesn't have any ink in it. Uh, Okay, so I poke myself, and then I'm just like, big X. As Darby is doing that, uh, he says, uh, Glass can barely get out. Uh, if these terms are more acceptable than immediate execution, then sign with your blood and your community service can begin immediately. As Darby, as you sign it, you can feel uh, something odd take hold. You feel some odd tingling. Something is happening in uh, the in the blood in your body. You feel some sort of mystical connection between you and... Better than drugs, worse than drugs. Uh, it's no euphoria. There's a kind of feeling of dread flowing between your body and the contract. You feel a sort of connection between your blood and the contract. You just feel uh, a really obvious feeling that, like, you just signed a magic contract that binds you to the terms. I'm guessing Darby didn't read the contract at all, but those that do, the contract just says exactly the terms that were just discussed openly between uh, uh, all of you. The pen is out of the table. Uh, what do the rest of you do? They're watching me have like a bad trip from something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 gosh. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, oh. Why us? I feel like I'm being cho- I feel like I'm being chosen for all these things that I don't feel like I should be chosen for. I, I, I'm not equipped to lead. What, what is this? It's the Tremere. Well, you actually have two options, Miss uh, Excavo. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. You, you I understand are... my options. I'm, I'm not... I just don't know why I was chosen for this. Well, it's either that or get killed, right? I, I understand that part. <laughs> But why? I like this way more than the. Why was I framed? Why was I chosen options? to be spared? Why this assignment? Well, it's almost like it was a contrivance to bring the four of us together. Right, I don't know these people, I, I don't know if they even know like me. Like, who... I don't think we had much of a choice. We got to play. I, I, yeah, I don't feel like I've had a lot of choice in the last few days <laughs> alone, let alone a lot of what's happened to me. So I, I guess this is just more of the same. 
it's all flowing downhill as usual. Just another thing we got to do. So uh, we all might as well sack up and do it. Zoot. So one, just another another job, another labor for the common man. So here we go. Let's 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 do uh, it. I labor for the common this. man. You're <laughs> like speaking my job. language. See, I knew I knew I liked this guy. He gets it. I I mean I I. I'm... He likes Salinger too. I hope this guy becomes the prince, an intellectual. Hey. You know, we'll see. I, I don't know what the jobs are. Archon Glass very obviously pulls out a pocket watch and stares at it in size. <laughs> so no answers. We just have two options. When you, uh, oh. Hey, guys. Let let me level with you guys. I don't know, I don't know where you all are coming from, but I was just, like, with a bunch of... I mean, I hope this doesn't get back to one, but a, a bunch of bullies and... And they were trying to force me to party, and but now we get to be in charge. We could have this whole town. There could be no no parties allowed at all. This is kind of <laughs> minus the stakes. I think. Well, this they only like certain kind of party. I don't. I don't party anyway. So that that's that's a well, good I guess, thing. I guess. So you're saying uh, we could make all the rules, a but nobody would be forced to party against their will. I mean, maybe e they'd finally be able to do their full ability. fiber optic Wi-Fi. I hate to interrupt, but are three of the four of you debating the merits of being executed instead of being prince tonight? It sounds like we're trying to look on the bright side of this situation, which I'm sure if you were on this the, side of the, the table, bright, the bright side of being given control of a city. I'm not exactly a leader. I'm more of a lone wolf type of person. So having to work together as a team. Augustine heaves a really frustrated sigh and just jabs himself with the pen and signs. Everything's, uh, we accomplish anything with teamwork and I sign it. I guess I signed the contract. I don't know what other choice I have. I mean, I don't feel like I really have any choice at all in any of this, so I fucking might as well. That's the spirit. Does Excavo sign the contract? Yes. I'm looking around uh, already for a line on the drugs. Like, street, street, <laughs> looking around, around, like, furtively glancing to the side, like, sizing up the situation. You see none in the room. We're in a room. Oh, we're sake, are there drugs in this city? We're, we're still in the, in the conference room full of oh, weapons. In yeah. In the room. Archon Glass collects all of your contracts in his briefcase. He then removes a curious object from it. It is a pair of unlabeled books which have been stacked on top of each other like a sandwich and have had their spines dipped together in a thick layer of wax, which has had an occult looking seal pressed into that wax. And then the books were then tied together with a red silk cord. It's like a pair of books stacked together and then wax on the end of it. He places this pair of books on the table in front of you. He says, since you will be left unsupervised and unobserved, we have no one who will be keeping a record of your activities. You must, therefore, keep your own record of your activities while you are serving your sentence here. This will help the Camarilla judge your performance. This will also help me determine what took place if I return and you are all dead. He picks up the books. Oh, yes, please. I, I volunteer. I enthusiastically volunteer to write the journal. You could type it because it's 2020. It, it might as well be made of like hot lava as far as <laughs> he, he looks at Archibald and he, he acknowledges him. Uh, he picks up the books and he carefully removes the silk cord and he, he pries them apart and it snaps the wax and he, it scatters wax on the table and he kind of brushes it aside. The two books separate and he slides one of the two books across the table over to Archibald. I pick them up and I check it out. Do I see anything of interest? Uh, you, uh, he slides one of the books over at you. You, you see that it's it's a blank book. It looks like a journal, just a blank journal. I'm going to casually raise my hand and kind of like gesture to him that I'd like to see the other book. 
Archon Glass uh, pulls out a pen and holds it to, to his book. And then he, he looks up at uh, Augustine and then just kind of shakes his head no. And he looks back down at his book and he begins writing on the cover of his book. Archibald, uh, you notice on the cover of your book that some handwriting suddenly starts appearing on the cover of your book. On the cover of your book, suddenly, as if someone's writing it on the cover of your book, all of a sudden it, it says, New Kamak, Indiana. And then on a line underneath it, it says, the current date and the current year, and then a dash and the current date and the next year. Archon Glass takes his book puts it in his briefcase along with your contracts, closes his briefcase and locks it. He stands up and he says, I trust you've already met Prince Delacroix. Well, he will introduce you to his city. He will hand his resources over to you. And among the four of you, he will select the new prince. Tomorrow morning, he will be leaving the country. Are there any final questions? Were you the one that took my drugs? If so, is there a possibility that I might be able to get those back? Because I have been thinking about them. <laughs> Did we get any of our stuff? I'm sure your drugs are long gone. I'm sure there are plenty more drugs in this city that you can acquire. From you? No, no, not from. Got it, got it. Cool. All right, all right, all right. We are in a I'm nightclub, no sir. So I'm no big expert on this stuff, but we are in a club called Wonderland that has a bunch of like weird psychedelic hippos, and so you're going to be able to find it a okay. Preach, I've seen preach. movies. Do we yeah. get any of our stuff from our house? Do I just leave that there? I have a cat. What do I do? Your cat is dead already. Your cat is probably dead, yes. What? Now it's yeah, person. Don't fuck around. She's gonna go John Wick on all y'all. I have I have computers <laughs> there. They're doing stuff. I need them. I could still execute you and you could join your cat. Would this be satisfactory? I have I do assets. I have the time. I have assets. I know, Chances are there's cats that. and computers in new whatever. New They're not new mine. Chemic. I've mapped them. I... <sighs> I'm sure whatever material <laughs> possessions... No, there's maps too, probably. Whatever so material possessions you have an attachment to can be replaced here, especially if you have money. All right, so what's up with... Are, are I need you this stuff to get the money. Like, is someone going to tell us what to do now? Because I feel like you got this whole, like, plan that's in operation, and we don't really get to decide anything. So what's what's next? What's the next hoop we all got to jump through? Weren't we oh. just about to meet Prin Prince Delacroix? I think that was oh. the guy that put a stake in us before. Yes, I, I believe you've... You have met Prince Delacroix, and he shall show you around the city, and uh, he will choose a prince, and uh, he will pass his resources on to you, and perhaps give you some pointers and advice. How about a tour, then, uh, Mr. Prince, sir? This is what you should probably say to him when you see him next. I believe he is upstairs. Oh, he's not here. Okay. <laughs> No, you're in a room just with just with our class right. and your guards that are behind you. Yeah, I'm gonna need like 20 minutes mm -hmm. and just like a couple of laps around the bar upstairs, just just to make some friends quick, and then uh, then yeah, we could go up. We could go up. No, I wouldn't mind getting something to eat. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's, that's a spirit. So Glass begins to walk out of the room. Then he pauses, and he turns to all of you, and he says. Know this. Prince Delacroix is among the most revered and accomplished sovereigns of the Camarilla that you will ever meet. He is owed your absolute respect and deference. And all the lights in the room, you'd swear they, they're starting to dim a little bit. 
He continues, if I find out that you were rude to this gentleman or that you made his last night in his own domain an unpleasant one, tales of your suffering will be dismissed as hyperbole. The next time I see you will be in this room one year from tonight. He walks out of the room and the lights return to normal. Your guards. I whisper, I whisper to Darby because I don't know if he's still listening, but I whisper to Darby and I said, "If he's so revered, you'd think he'd be in Paris and not New Kamak, Indiana." <laughs> as soon as he's out of the room, one of the guards goes like, Ugh. and then the guards walk out behind him. The last guard out the door taps the one in front of him on the shoulder and motions him for him to like wait, and the last guard like turns to the four of you. Uh, Hey, guys, um, we figured you guys probably need a car. And uh, a couple of us can just, like, carpool back to where we're going. So, uh... Darby perks up immediately. Is like, so interested all of a sudden. You, oh, yeah? You can. You guys can take the black uh, Escalade in the parking lot, if that's cool with you. And he'd, he'd like... Darby is holding his hands up, like, keys, me, this guy, He tosses right some keys in the parking lot. You want the... We can put the registration in your name, too. Is that cool? Just like in case yeah. you get yeah, sure. pulled over. Yeah, d- definitely. Thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah. yeah, show me. Uh, uh, show me your uh, uh, your driver's license. I'll take a picture of it. We'll put the registration in your name. So if you get pulled over, you you know. to him. He's got a he's got a professional chauffeur's. Uh, I, I don't need to do this in the accident. He's got like a, a chauffeur's <laughs> license. The guy takes a uh, a picture of the license. Says, "Cool, we'll get the registration taken care of." Uh, all right. Uh, good luck with this uh, fucking weird thing you guys are doing. Bye. Thanks, boss. Sweet. You guys are now alone in the weapon wall conference room. All right. So uh, we all had some errands we needed to run for like a couple minutes, and then we're going to meet up and go talk to that guy. I uh, I really got to see a man about a horse and just, I'm out. I'm out. You go get your horse. I'm going to see a wall about some sharp knives. You do you, do you boss. Uh, and I'm I'm in in pursuit of uh, of my my tweakers. I'm picking out some nice knives, and I say, <laughs> "You're gonna talk about, t- talk about seizing the means of production." Yes, <laughs> that's that's nice. I like that. It's gonna be all like socialist anarchist puns this whole time, isn't it? Basically, yeah. I'm fine with it. I observe the the wall of weapons. What? all is on it it's a, a very large wide wall like like basically what you would expect from a really well done museum of weaponry there's about a dozen different impact weapons and bladed weapons from various european countries there's a couple dozen at least weapons from various uh asian countries it's just a mess of weapons maybe the best uh example i can give you i think that maybe the second matrix movie there's like there's a fight in a mansion and there's like a, a double set of staircases and there's just a mess of weapons on the walls what what are you going for is there something in particular that you, you want you want to list I have a, th- a few things I'm looking for. Can I just like run them by you? Sure. And see if they're available for me to nab. Sure. Uh, I need a fairly sharp pruning knife. A pruning knife. A pruning knife. I'm not. So what kind of actual blade would be similar to a pruning knife? Like a weapon? Like a tanto? Like what does a pruning knife look like? A short tooth-shaped blade. That is very, very sharp. I'm going to say nothing jumps out at you as being quite what you're describing. Are there any reasonably triangular bra- blades available that are fairly short? Short triangular, like a cross section? Just a short stabbing blade that's very sharp. There are two tantos. I'm going to grab both of them. You have two tantos now. I am going to also like take some kind of dagger... Which, I mean, like, Andy just grabbed both of the Tontos because he's a Tonto hog. But <laughs> I, I, I 
what other kind of like short kind of blades are there? Because you know, I, uh, Archibald is a reserved man of class. He doesn't want anything too crazy. He wants something sleek and elegant. Actually, uh, the two Tantos are about the only small, sharp things that you would so, be able to describe as as daggers. About everything else is like large, showy things. Okay, perfect. So I'm I'm reaching for it, and then the the Tremere grabs them both, and I look dejected for a second, and I kind of <laughs> turn my head down and look away and to the side, and then I see it. A katana, obviously. Uh, I see the katana. <laughs> my eyes light up. I'm just like, just like in Akira Kurosawa's seminal film, The Hidden Fortress, and I grab it. Okay, you are now holding a katana. <laughs> yeah, I take that thing, obviously. Let's go. Can I have it? You are now holding a katana in the basement of a nightclub. Like one does. What's your next move? I look around. I, I'm dismissive of the firearms. I'm not that kind of guy. There are not any, any firearms. Firearm skills. What? There are not. Oh, yeah, there are only other. T- are there by any chance, I think, instead of the katana goof, there's something that I would like. Is there a hammer and is there a sickle? There's a pair of comma, which are essentially uh, sickles. I'm going to take those, yeah. You would not have been able to conceal katanas, uh, a katana, but you can awkwardly hide commas like up in your shirt. They'd be a bitch to get in and out, but you can hide a comma like up under a jacket. So you have a pair of okay. comma. A comma. What's the hammer situation? Uh, there are war hammers, as in like pole arms. Can I take one comma and one hammer? Is there a way to get all three? I, I mean, think he's inviting you to consider the logistics of transporting whatever you're about to acquire back out of this nightclub where you were metal detected on the way in. Um, uh, so, like, you could grab whatever you want off the door, but he was saying that if you took those uh, comma, you could conceal them somewhat awkwardly, but you could conceal them. Whereas okay. if you took a katana or a war hammer, people would likely ask questions as you were um, maybe trying to take it back with you. You don't see anything that's like that's like a short hammer. You do see uh, war hammers, but those are like like the five foot long, like pole arm okay. kind of war hammers. I, okay. I'm going to take the pair of comma, and then I, I do make a remark to myself, ah, they probably have hammers at Lowe's. Yeah. <laughs> Super easy to find a hammer. They're not oh, a, no. they're not an exotic here. object. Do I assume you're all concealing your weapons? I'm concealing. I am the weapon, but I, I will roleplay the hunt for some food if we need to do that. All I'm right. trying to look up how to be a good leader. I guess I have to figure that out now. That's funny. Just Googling how to be a leader. That's awesome. Oh, a reminder. Um, none of you have cell phones. Everything of yours other than your wallets and your uh, your. Is clothing. there Wi-Fi here? How would you know? You have no way of knowing. Google Glass. I feel like I would have asked him. If I didn't have my phone, I would have asked. If you did ask... I thought I had my phone. I I had asked earlier if my phone... Yeah, you've been Googling stuff this whole time. Yeah. Who who did you ask that? I asked that to you earlier when we were first taken prisoner. You know, I was like, are they taking my phone from me? Oh. And then you said that they weren't doing anything that he didn't say. I so I assumed that I still had my phone. Oh, sorry oh. if that was unclear. Uh yeah. Like technology's my thing. I need to have something. Um yes, uh everything other than your wallets and your clothes was taken. Um so, what is yeah. everyone knows the way back up to the main floor, main floor of the club. Uh and everyone knows their the directive given to them by Archon Glass. What's everyone's <coughs> move right now? I, I said that in character. I thought we had agreed to take 10 minutes to kind of, everybody had like little errands they wanted to run. And then we'd meet and go talk to the prince together. So my errand was obviously to find some tweakers, get some drugs. That's my thing. And I'm hungry. 
and we all took three lethal damage, and I would want to burn blood to heal that, and then want to replenish my blood supply. Okay. All of you are at half of your blood pool rounded up. Uh, that is, for Augustin and Darby, uh, you're at eight. For Excavo, you're at five. Uh, for Archibald, uh, you're at seven. What is, what's Darby's strategy? What would he be rolling for his hunt? Um, okay, great question. I think I would get, um, so I have, I have one point of streetwise. I think I'd go alertness plus streetwise. Does that, does that make sense? I guess I, I need to pick a, uh, I need to pick an attribute plus streetwise. Wits, uh, charisma. I'm going to go charisma plus streetwise. For my for my find a tweaker, befriend them, and get drugs from their blood. Are you thinking of going outside of the club? No, I thought to use the club as my as my hunting ground. I felt like there would be people on drugs at the club, but if I didn't find anybody who matched my you know profile of a of prey of a tweaker, then I, I would leave and go to a, a different neighborhood. Okay, make that roll. Got one, two, three, four. A great success. To keep it simple, uh, let's say for everyone's first hunt, for every success, uh, if you're not trying to to drain anybody, you get three blood points. So I, I max out my pool, and then I also put a little away um, in, in the stockpile. Tell us about this stockpile. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't have any type of container to in at the time uh, that's something i would have to prepare later so I, I just max out my blood pool and leave the person in a stupor so you managed to find some meth heads somewhere in the vicinity of club wonderland yes and i am fully uh i am on meth, so there are some effects to that and i am feeling those effects yes the uh the difficulty to resist frenzy is a little higher for you uh as a permanent thing because yeah. uh all yeah, the sorry. all the blood you drink is meth blood period right and for the next few minutes uh right. you effectively have more celerity than you really have i think we'll we'll work out the mechanics of feeding we'll refamiliarize ourselves with that and probably figure out how how difficult should it be to find methods especially in different parts of town. Uh, yeah, where are they getting the myth? Yeah. Oh. Where is it coming from? Is it all made in the city? It's not impossible to manufacture. I imagine people can leave. It's just that like vampires can't, right? Yeah. Is all trade in and out of the city shut down? Is that what we were led to believe? Or just the vampire trap? Like we, we and our and other kindred have been restricted from traveling. What you were told was that you are not allowed to leave the city, that other kindred have been discouraged from entering the city if they don't already have prior business here. Okay. What about humans? Humans have, don't know about it. They're, they're, just, yeah. they're doing their thing. They're in their own separate world. They don't know anything about this. So life goes on for them. Okay, that's fine. So I, I think I've accomplished my, my goal for this 10 minutes. I go back and wait by the stairs. Uh, we were told to ascend to go meet the prince just for, for everybody else. I want to make the hunt for, for meth blood a little more interesting later, but I don't want to get too tangled up in that stuff right now. Okay. I'm trying to steal a cell phone. I, I need to get online. Okay. What's your strategy? Um... I'm gonna in this dark, loud club with a bunch of drunk people on drugs. Um, Shouldn't be that hard. I'm, uh, yeah, I have a good amount of streetwise and a good amount of stealth, and I think I can just even just convince somebody to give me their cell phone if stealing it doesn't work. <laughs> like Steve is calling you. Who's Steve? <laughs> Steve. He has been trying to call you. Well, give, no, it, give me your phone. Let me look at this. I'll, I'll answer it for you. No, I'd get a new SIM card. And then as soon as it's handed over, that. just walk away with it. But yeah, I'm like, I need a, an electronic device. That is my home base. 
You do have one point of dominate. What exactly does that do? The first level of dominate allows you to issue a one-word command. And if you succeed on the roll, uh, the person has to do the thing that you say. Okay. So the command could be something like, gimme. And if you combine that with a gesture, like you're pointing to a cell phone. So if so you wanted if to, you wanted to make, make a random person using random their cell phone, just phone. give you their cell phone. Yeah. Uh, and if you wanted to I, use uh, your dominate, uh, which you have one dot in, you would go up and you would, you would have to get eye contact with them. You'd have to be able to, you know, use your special vampire eye contact thing Yay! and you'd roll manipulation plus intimidation and mm-hmm. you would oh, okay. only be able to issue a simple one word command and then if you win they would immediately do it okay um that's what i do uh let's see and okay. the more successes you get that determines how long they will cooperate i guess oh i just need them to give me the phone i don't know it doesn't need to be very long well if you get one success they'll give you the phone and then they might snap out of it and be like what the no give it back if you get (laughs) like five successes they might give you the phone and be cool with that for long enough for you to be like out of there before they realize hey why did i give that person my phone all right. like, oh yeah, I always forget the password for that one. <laughs> well, let, let's see what happens. All right. This will be a uh, difficulty of five. You got two successes. Okay. So, so I take it. Um, well, oh, describe it. describe what you did to a a random. So there's this phone. lady. At the bar, and she, um, she, uh, she has such long, pretty hair and a beautiful dress, and she's barely able to stand on her heels. And I'm like, that's the one. So I go over there, and she looks like she's about to get a drink that she should not get. I tap her on the shoulder, she looks me directly in the eye, and I say, Phone. <laughs> And then she gives me the phone, you right? The, you get the eye contact and you succeed in the role and she hands you the phone. And I pass through the crowd. And you disappear. You now have yeah. the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking run back to the room. <laughs> uh, I got- Not conspicuously though. I have, I have a good amount of stealth too. All right. Uh, cutting to uh, Augustine. Uh, how are you spending your break? In a fairly quiet but less brooding manner, wandering around the edges <laughs> of the club, sniffing around for what I can, would assume to be weed, looking for somebody who has what smells like particularly seedy weed to talk to. Sniffing around, you do, in fact, smell... It doesn't smell like anyone smoking in there, but you do smell... Some people, uh, you you follow a smell upstairs in the the second floor, which is like a U shaped second floor that's built so that you can go upstairs and kind of overlook the dance floor. And I'm going to calmly and nondescriptly walk up that staircase and follow the smell. There's a table with a few people with long hair and denim jackets that seem to all do a pretty good job absorbing the smell of a lot of pot smoke that they seem to have smoked recently. Okay, so that whole plant growthy thing is going to be something I'm trying here in a second. Okay. But, but I casually walk up and I'm just like, hey, man. Walk up to whoever looks the most inviting, and I sit down. There's a hippie-looking chick there, and she's like, hey, bro, what's up? Hey, friend. I uh, trouble you a trade. I would really like some... <laughs> I would really like some of your vegetables. In exchange, I'll show you a really neat trick. 
some of my vegetables. What are you talking about, man? You want your, like, your tree, your trees. My trees. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, man. Like the little trees that, like, yeah, they're prone to forest fires, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly those ones. Oh, uh, man, like, I had some, but, like, we blazed it all in the parking lot, dude. Like, I might, I think, like, I might have a J uh, in my car. Like, like I could, I can give that to you. I mean, man, like, I don't, I don't want to leave, I don't want you to leave empty-handed, man, if you're in need, if you don't got nothing. What? That's super nice of you. I, I'm just new in town, and I'm looking for. Uh, I you know I don't have any connects. Uh, do you do is, do you know anyone here that I could procure some from? Oh man, I'm getting a weird vibe from you though. You like it? Are you like a CI? Are you like a cop? I think you're supposed oh, to. I think you have to tell me if you are. You're absolutely right. I if I were a cop, it's the law. I would have to tell you. And I can comfortably tell you that I'm not. I'm just an introvert that's not used to this town. See, that's all. Like, the only reason I ask is because, like, you're saying the exact things that, like, like my buddy Jordan, like, a CI busted him. And, like, those are the same things the CI said that, like, he wasn't in town. And he didn't know anybody. He didn't have any connects. So, like. I. I Without revealing the daggers in my pockets, I literally pull the tongues of my pockets out to reveal that I have nothing in there but my wallet. Like, I don't even have a phone, man. I, I There's no wire, kind of pulls oh, wow. the collar down. Oh, there's like, no way you could be a cop then. Uh, well, okay. Um, well, I can I can hook you up. Like, I, um, you know, you know about our 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 camp, our. Wait, are you new in town? Do you or do you know about the the camp we got over in over in the woods? I am very. I just showed up like this week, and this is my first night out, and I just I haven't had a chance to be social. So, I haven't. Oh. Heard, is, is it like a? Is it a music camp? Oh, uh, what, what's out there? Oh no, we got like uh like this commune thing. Like we live in nature and we grow stuff. Like we grow trees and stuff. Um, we got like, I don't know. It's got a reputation. Um, it's not a, it's not a cult. It used to be, it's not anymore. It's just a bunch of us that love nature and we live out in the woods. We had like this founder guy that he founded this little intentional community and we we all got together and we all lived according to to his principles out there in the woods and we grew food for ourselves and we like uh we we slept during the day and we were awake at night cuz it was better for our chakras and our energy and stuff and that's what he that's what he told us and like it was it was mostly it was mostly women and people thought that was weird, and people thought it was a cult, but it wasn't a cult. It was just a loving, intentional family by choice. And unfortunately, a few years ago, like you know, one of one of the sisters, you know, her her husband came to the to the camp, and and like and shot the guy, our founder, because he, he thought. Uh, he had all these wrong ideas about the guy who started our group. Anyway, shot and killed the guy who founded our camp, our community. So anyway, we we buried him on the grounds of our camp. So now we're going to pass the the group on to a new leader. But that guy didn't want to do it. So now it's a democratically run just sort of free commune where we all live together. We're all one big family and we grow lots of, lots of trees for the whole community and we don't want any cops there. So well, uh, that I'm sorry to hear about the death of your, your leader. That's it was super a heavy, real man, but bummer. And it was it, it not a cult. Like a, 
It was not a cult. It sounds like a mad bummer, but I mean, I'm, I'm, that's what I do. I work with plants and I was brought here to, Oh, you work with plants. I work with plants. I, I'm, I've, they've, I've got the greenest thumb. Some would say uh, not everybody, but some, and, uh, I, I'd, I, it sounds like that's right up my alley. Uh, is there any ch- how? Is there any chance to be cool if I come and swung by at some point? Like, how would I oh, reach man, out to yeah. you guys? I mean, yeah, like give us a heads up if you're going to come there. It's because uh, I mean we we like to know if people are stopping by just because it's you know because of the no cops thing. We think it's a little weird when I mean we get a little skittish. If you know, with strangers, you know, stomp in because we're get a little protective. But yeah, anytime you want to stop by, let me just like write down my number. And she gets out a little piece of paper. Uh, she writes the name Feather McKenna and a phone number on it. All right. Well, cool, man. Well, I won't uh, harsh the mellow of the rest of your night. Thank- it was awesome meeting you, Feather. Uh, I'm Augustine. And I'll, uh, I look forward to meeting up with you guys, you know, as soon as I get settled in and stuff. Have a beautiful night, friend. Hey, hang on a second. And she leans in. And she looks at you really closely. And she turns to, to the other hippie dude at the table. She's like, hey, hang on a second. I, I got to talk to this guy. And she, and she stands up and she, like, takes your hand and she, and she pulls you, like, she like walks like 20 feet away from anybody else. And she like, she looks you like really closely in your face. And then she like holds your face, like grabs your, your face and like kind of turns it to one side and the other, like she's studying you. She says, Hey, are you a vampire? I'm told that I come off that way. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit distant, but, Last I checked, I wasn't. Why? Oh, oh, are you here to? Are you here to meet Prince Delacroix? I heard he's, he's he's retiring. It's cool. I'm a ghoul. I know him. I hang out at his at his place. Admittedly, my brow furrows. No, it's cool, dude. I guess I'm sorry. We're not, I'm not supposed to talk about this stuff. No, it's cool. I'm a ghoul. There's a a, a gangrel. The I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be turned into a gangrel uh, sometime soon. It's I know we're not supposed to talk about it. It's super secret. It's super secret. I'm not I'm not supposed to the masquerade and all that. But it's I just wanted I could tell I'm I've started to be able to recognize vampires. I just I thought it'd be funny. What clan are you in? I'm sorry. I'm it's not cool for me to say that. I just I could t- notice because you're like cold and pale and stuff. So I, we, can talk, uh, we can talk about it later, but I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll get you trees and stuff. I, I too am into cosplay, like you're into vegetables. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. And she starts walking back to her table. And I, having had this, wish her well and effectively, calmly but very expediently, make my way back to the room. <laughs> Archibald. Is, is there anything you are doing with your time uh, before you guys are seeking out Prince Delacroix? I don't think so. As, as like, anti-authoritarian as I am in principle, personally, I kind of just am a, a follower. So I'm just kind of doing as I was just told by the people. And, like, everybody else has disappeared to do their, like, drug and cell phone antics. And I'm just, like sort of impatiently waiting um like near the the exit like wondering where they are i think i've only got a couple of minutes i, I probably come back first yeah it i'm just like tapping my foot long. and wondering and when you get there like oh i'm like oh thank goodness oh what's up man you just wait here the whole time well yeah they told us to come and and meet the the prince delacroix guy can't always believe what they tell you man well, I guess that's true. Yes. I got invited to a party tonight and then was staked in the heart, driven halfway across the country, and then started to get it. Now, here we are. So I didn't think it was a double prank situation, you know? There's something bigger afoot, man. There's some kind of master plan. You are a, a deep thinker, my friend. 
I can tell we're going to get along swimmingly. Enter the room and can clearly see that Darby is elevated. And oh yeah, no, it is not. It is not a secret. I am like noticeably different than I was five minutes ago before I left. But it could have been mistaken for eagerness and like just you know you know uh, a zeal for the topic rather than uh, a joie de vivre. Yeah. No. Exactly. No. I, I have, have no I have idea. Two, I have two points of streetwise. I know what's happening, right? Oh yeah. No, I have no. zero <laughs> points of streetwise. I have no idea. I, I, I just see Darby that. is Darby is elevated and. Archibald is being buoyant and bubbly, which I don't find awesome. So I'm just like, I walk in, see them, and I sit you down and I, and I wait for everything to for the. the Augustine walks room. over and Archibald asks, "Is there a skunk in here?" Fanciful though they may be, unfortunately, no. There is no skunk. Only skunks about. Darby's like trying to make eyes, like we're like we're. Oh, I get it. Like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, she, yeah, nice. I see, I see. Same, same. I just, I different I just kind of Shoot. annoyedly sigh and go back to whatever this nearest seat is right. and try and generally ignore Archibald's commentary. Well, guys, if everybody's done and they got their their drinks and they use the the bathroom maybe it's time to go meet the prince huh yeah shit they're not giving us much of a choice anyway so we might we might as well it sounds reasonable I'm you know ready. some theorize that in truly we none of us have any choice in any of it ain't that the truth you've all reconvened at the bar i take it I, I thought they told us to like go upstairs and meet someone. We are like wherever we are supposed to meet. Yeah, exactly. Um, if he told us meeting place, that's where we are. Okay, so let's say uh, you are back at uh, the dance floor, the center of the ground floor, at the bar, the obvious meeting place. You see a woman bartending. You see two college age women on their phones. Uh, you see a third woman uh, looking around, kind of frantically, for a lost phone. Um, and you see an elderly black man with a thin mustache in an exquisite purple suit with a subtle paisley pattern who is a wooden cane hanging off the back of his chair uh, who is who's speaking to the, uh, the, the sloppy drunk with a sippy cup that interrupted you when you were coming in earlier. I kind of say, like, this, I'm, like, just squirming and looking around. I'm just like, does... Who looks like a prince? And then I see him and like I kind of nudge everybody else. Like, Does he look princely to you? Is, is that the prince? He he does look quite a bit like a prince now that you mention. He's very purple. I'll go I'll go up to him and say hey. So I walk up to him immediately. Hey, are you Prince? The Prince, I mean. Oh hello, young man. I, no, I I'm afraid he died. Oh, bummer. A few years ago, I believe. Right, right, right. Um, so it's a know, shame. He was such a talent. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's not the prince he's referring to. Delacroix. Yes. mean anything to you? Delacroix. Delacroix, Delacroix means quite a lot to me. I I do love those French names. They, they all sound like butter just melting off of a pancake or a, or a crepe mm. as the as the case may be. I'm going to need you to take this. I'm asking you some questions here. So if you could just tell me, are you Mr. Delacroix? Do you know Mr. Delacroix? <laughs> oh, oh no. If only I'm, I'm afraid you, you must be referring to Mr. Randolph Delacroix, my, my dear friend over here to my right. And he points to the drunk with a sippy cup who, who stumbles completely over the elderly man and says, Hey, you guys, how the meeting go? You said uh, you talked to Will. He wasn't, he wasn't too scary, was he? This guy? No. And sure. scene. That is where we will close Beautiful. this episode Wonderful. of New Kamak. You have now met the outgoing prince of New Kamak, the drunken Prince Randolph Delacroix, who introduced himself as Randy, who in the next episode will give you a tour of the city and who will choose his successor, who will be the new prince. 
We'll see what adventures he will lead you on. What do we think of it? I classic misdirection there. I like him being the prince. <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Who else would you have thought was the prince? I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly thought it was somebody, many, a couple, many somebody's that I know in Muncie that was just being a, a, a Muncie-like <laughs> character. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this is just for flavor to let us know this is where we're at. <laughs> it was a good misdirection. For somebody who used to role play with Graham, it, it is really um, amusing to hear which like pieces of our mutual lore he's been drawing from. It's been uh, a fun walk down memory lane. And I think my favorite thing so far in this game has been uh, Blake's character, Archibald, completely vibing with Darby because he misunderstands where they're coming from. Like, then <laughs> the friends on accident is, is like, <laughs> really like I mean, friends. yeah, he, well, I mean, Archibald, based on, I mean, mainly the fact that you made a, a dumb joke about Holden Caulfield, yeah, he yeah. thinks that you are a fellow literary <laughs> mind. He thinks Dollar. that you are super <laughs> academic and scholarly totally jiving with him right now um, and that's like classic ninth grade reading <laughs> and I, I think it, it i think it will be very funny at some point if that bubble bursts well i sincerely hope and it will be an interesting dramatic conflict next session um you know, uh, Darby is is ill suited to be the prince of, of any of any place. If he ends up uh, being the prince, I, I don't know if any of us would be really great at it. Honestly, uh, kind of a motley crew we've got here. Um, but I think um, Augustine would be the safest choice if I were to choose somebody. I don't think he's making that choice at during the tour, though. It's gonna be after the tour. I know that. I, I mean, if if it were like m me choosing out of the four of our characters, who would be Prince? It, you, like, you know, it's like um, what is it? In South Park, they have Peter Cottontail being the Pope. It, it's a safe choice. It's a you know, not a lot of not a lot of words. You're just very you, you're seemingly subdued. <laughs> which my character knows is from he's smoking pot. But no, <laughs> no, but I didn't smoke the pot. I went you out smell looking. smell like it. So yeah, I assumed like something it. happened. This like, is just a family show. Me, I'm like, okay, drugs. Um, that was one thing I, 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 I like where my errand went. Uh, I was definitely trying to just find seeds. I wanted seeds from something, and I was planning on literally using, like, the growthy ability I have and f playing it off like I wasn't using a magical ability to make their weed more frosty or something, and then pulling out the dagger and being like, hey, if you just prune your weed this way, look at what it does to the crystals, and then coaxing them out of some seeds so I'd have seeds on me. And uh, I'm actually okay with that not happening. I think where that went was fruitful. Hmm. I sat here spastically taking notes on post-it notes to remind myself what information I now have. All right, well, good game, everybody. Yeah, GG. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for writing it, buddy. Until next time. See you next time. Looking right. forward to it, my friends. Bye, everybody. Work. Good. Bye. Good night.